Okay, so we're starting off on a good foot in this chapter. Most of you look like you understood what was going on when dealing with moles. Mole is just a, a measurement or a unit that measures how many of a big number that we can reduce down to a mole. So we know a mole is equal to 6.02 to the 23rd particles, but we don't want to use that big number. We want to simplify it, and we want to go ahead and relate it to a unit called a mole. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about mass. This is really, really important, more important than what we did than we did yesterday. We're looking at mass. And so what's mass measured in? Grams. So we're going to look at measurements of grams. And you have to have your periodic table out because we're going to refer to the periodic table in which to get you the mass that you need to have. Okay? So the molar mass, I'm going to give you the definition, a simple definition. So, it, you can either calculate it and figure it out, or if it's an element, the periodic table tells you what the weight is. So, I'll let you write that down, and then I'll have you look at your periodic table. And when you look at the periodic table, I'm going to give you a number to look at that represents what's called the molar mass of that element. Okay, we, got, we have to start at elements first, and then compounds we can go to. So, because compounds um, consist of multiple elements hooked together, so we definitely want to look at element first, and then we'll look at compound. All right. So, the molar mass of an element is equal... to the element's atomic weight. So everybody knows where to find atomic weight on the periodic table, right? So have your periodic table and we'll look, we'll look for two or three different elements and see if we can find their atomic weight and then write it down and then I can go ahead and kind of show you how all these a number of atoms, moles, and the weight all interact okay, in, in one kind of uh, equal, equaling statement. So the first one, let's look up. Let's have you look up carbon. Find the atomic weight of carbon. Okay, so what's the atomic weight of carbon? Somebody tell me? Yeah. Now, all I will ask you to do is go to the nearest 100 spot. So some of them can go like to the nearest 10,000 spot or go 4 or 5 to the right of the decimal. All I'm requiring you to know is to go to the nearest 100 spot. So for carbon, it's 12.01. Okay? Now, what does that mean? It's, it's a molar mass. And so, how do we represent a molar mass? We have two units. Okay? One unit is a gram. Okay? The next unit, since that represents... 
How many moles does that represent? Number of grams that have one mole. So when you write it, it should be grams per mole. Right? So here's the deal. What's a mole? How many, how many atoms is a mole? Right, never got his number. And that's what a mole is. So what we could do is, uh, I'm going to give you a general kind of uh, formula up there. I'm going to go ahead and say the atomic weight Okay, which is the molar mass is equal to one mole of atoms, which is also equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Those are all equal. Okay, so we can weigh things and get counts now. We can weigh out so much carbon, and then we can know we know how many atoms we have. Okay, and we'll do some of those conversions a little bit later. So we can weigh something out, and we can determine how many atoms that we would have. Okay, so I want you to let's go ahead and do a couple more. Let's have you do uh, ten, what its molar mass is, and let's have you do um, strontium. So look those up, and then tell me, and then find their molar mass. So, element 10, what would that be? What is it? 118.2? 118.71. And the units, grams per mole. Correct? How about strontium? Okay, so 87.62. Any questions on molar mass? So, what does that tell you? It tells you three things. It tells you grams. That's equal to a mole. It also tells you you've got one mole of it if you've got that many grams. And it also tells you how many atoms you have. This number of atoms. If you have this weight. If you don't have that weight, then we can figure it out later. With This is our conversion. This will be grams over one mole when we convert. Okay? Any questions you have with that? Okay, so uh, we're going we're gonna to do we're going to do some conversions today, all right? And uh, this is a con concept that sometimes students have a difficult time with, but I think once you did moles to atoms, this will be a, get easier. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and and uh, do some practice problems. Um, dealing with that is your conversion. So let's say I have one hundred grams of carbon, and I want to know how many mole of carbon atoms I have. Okay? So what I'm going to do is that this is my quantity, they give me 100. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert. And my answer out here is going to be moles of carbon. And this is grams of carbon here. So what unit needs to go down below, you think? Grams. Okay, I'm not going to put a number with it. I'm going to put grams of carbon. Okay, and then up above, what do you think unit goes up there? Moles of carbon, right? Okay, now I put my numbers in. What goes with the grams of carbon? So we come back to um, this one. There's our conversion. We look it up. Uh, what number goes with grams? 12.01. So I'm going to put 12.01 down here because that's how many grams are in how many moles? One mole. So then I just take 100 divided by 12.01, and that's my answer. That Now I'm counting atoms. I can count atoms and compare counts of atoms. 
Before I just had a weight, now I have a count in moles. And the count of atoms and moles I have is 8.326. Any questions with that? So it usually won't be in scientific notation for the answer? Right. We won't have any in scientific notation unless you purposely do that yourself. Okay? All right. So let's have you do one and see if you can figure it out. Okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you... Um, let's go ahead and give you 13.3 grams of... Oh, let's go manganese. And I want you to figure out the moles of manganese atoms. So go ahead and do that conversion and see what you can come up with. So, when you look at this one, uh, this is a number you put out in front. You go 13.3 grams of manganese. Make sure you look up the right one. There's manganese and then there's magnesium. And so they're really close to one another on the periodic table as well. So on that one, when you look at manganese, it should be 54.94. So we got grams of manganese and we got moles of manganese. And that would be 1 over that number, which would be 54.94. Grams cancel, and you get your answer. So it's going to be less than a mole because it's less than what would mole particles would be. So it's going to be a decimal, of course. So your answer is 0.242 moles. Any questions? Good to go? Alright, here's the other scenario. Alright? Um, let's say that um, let's say that we were given moles and we want to find grams. So let's say that we're given um, 2.34 moles of zinc and we want to go ahead and find grams of zinc. See if you can do that without me showing you how to do it. See if you can set it up in which to calculate grams of zinc. So your periodic table always gives you what the weight of one mole is, okay, for that particular element. So then when you look up on the periodic table for every one mole of zinc, how many grams do you have of zinc? 65.41. Moles cancel out, we end up with um, grams of zinc. So that would be 2.34 times 65.4. You get an answer of 153 grams. 153 grams. Any questions you have on doing that? I don't, I'm not going to do another one of those. I'm going to have you practice. So this is what I want you to do. Um, we're going to have you skip over to page 205. And I'm going to have you do yeah, just add it to the other assignment would be fine. I'll just uh, it's be just a do double check uh, answers. I don't, I'm not going to give you a lot. Okay, I want you to do 22A and B. I want you to do 26 A and B. I want you to do 28A. So I've got five problems for you to do. What page is this? 205. 